gonna get started. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's, um... Let's try to recap real quick. You know, we got a lot. I want to try to cover a little bit more today. So let's try to, you know, so let's give a, a quick recap. What we got, Mel? Save us. Oh, my goodness gracious. TJ ain't even here. You know what I'm saying? Goodness gracious. All right, let me see. Kickstart. I forgot, too. You know, let me think about that for a second. What we had last week? So last week, we were dealing with a king. His name was what? Dealing with a king. <laughs> His name was Solomon, right? Solomon, King Solomon. Y'all remember King Solomon? He's the son of King David. No? Still don't remember. You don't remember that his brother, you know what I'm saying? His brother, you know what I'm saying, tried to take the kingdom? His, uh, um, David, I think David ran on it, hit it. Yeah. Was that last week or the week before? Yeah, he was getting ready for the kingdom. Talking about, you know. Um, that was last week, right? Yeah, he was saying, uh, giving them all of the uh, blueprints for the temple and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, David. Oh, no, no, no. Are you talking about David? Yeah, David getting Solomon ready for the, to build the, the temple? That ain't what you were talking oh, about. Oh, I remember. <laughs> so, so, we were talking about, we were talking about giving this one guy that had the lunch. And then you were talking about how. Somebody gave somebody the blueprints and he lied. You said he had he was wrong. Mm -hmm. And then you looked at it because you you said he used the same names and words and phrases to make you think that it would be right. But then you actually looked at it and read it and it's wrong. And the way we knew it was wrong <clears throat> is because King David said himself, you know what I'm saying, that he got the information from where? The book said from the spirit. Right. So he got it from the spirit of Yah. It showed the spirit of Yah showed him the patterns and showed him how things work. Right. And so that's what <clears throat> that's what um, that's what we look to. You know what I'm saying? Some somebody say something in the world and then somebody say something on on, on uh, some something that contradicts the word. You know what I'm saying? What do we got to do? We got to go with the word every time. Right. So that's what that was about. But yeah, David, that's what we read last week. David started to prepare the plans, right? He started to prepare the plans for, for King Solomon. And uh, as he prepared those plans for King Solomon, um, you know, David died. You know what I'm saying? And then Solomon ended up taking the kingdom. So we're going to kind of start talking about, you know, we're going to recap, but we're going to look at it. Last week we read in Chronicles. So this week we're going to read in Kings and we're going to kind of start with David dying. Um, and then we're going to go on into, you know, saying the beginning of Solomon's kingdom. Remember, I told you all that Solomon's kingdom is going to come with some judgment. He's going to kind of deal with all the stuff, he, all, the, all the loose ends that David left open. He's going to try to close them things out. So we're going to try to cover that today. OK. All right. Well, let's do it. This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. He was establishing the kingdom. That's right, Sharon. I know I got water, but I ain't gonna lie to you. I kind of want a little lemonade. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man, that water is hidden right now. With that lemonade, I ain't gonna lie to you. That lemonade been sitting right there on my desk for about three days. I don't know if it's safe to, <coughs> to drink. Go for it. You know I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Go on. You want to be sick for another three days? Go ahead. <coughs> Chapter two. 
Now the days of David drew near that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. He said, I go the way of all the earth. What does that mean? I mean I'm about to die. We got to learn our phrases. There's certain phrases that come from our people. You know what I'm saying? Certain Israelite phrases. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of them. I go the way of all the earth. Basically, it's saying that everybody has to die. Everybody. Right? Everybody one day has to die. So he's just saying, I'm doing what everybody going to end up doing anyway. Right. So he said, I'm going the way to uh, uh, go to I'm going the way of all the earth. Keep going. <clears throat> Be strong, therefore, to show yourself a man mm -hmm. and keep the charge. I love that thing. Be strong. Show yourself a darn man. That's what I'm gonna tell my boys one day. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let me, you better stand up and show yourself a darn man. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what he said. You got you have to do. You got to prove it. That's what this stuff is about. People. People, what people find themselves in is they don't want to prove because proving something comes with accountability, right? And if you got accountability, somebody can tell you that you're right or you're wrong and you got to deal with it. People don't like that. So people hide and they sneak and they pretend to be one way and they actually another way. And that's what you got to deal with in the world. We can't be that way. We got to be the same people that we are internally as we are externally. Otherwise, what we're telling ourselves and what we're telling God is we have no intentions on being different. Right. If you're trying to hide, trying to hide the right thing, if you're trying to hide the truth, what you the message that you send in is I want to continue to be a liar. All right. I want to continue to be unrighteous. Right. And that's why people like that don't get mercy. You get a little bit more mercy in some situations. If you walk up and be like, no, nah, I messed up. I'm wrong because that signals to people. Oh, this person doesn't want to be wrong. That's why they're not hiding. it. They want it to be dealt with because they want to be corrected. They want to be better. It's not comfortable. Don't nobody like being wrong. Don't nobody like, nobody like being in trouble. Don't nobody like getting punished. Right. But when you think it, I'm not thinking about the punishment. I'm thinking about the long term is after this, I have a better chance of being right. When that's your mindset, people have more mercy because they're looking like, Oh, well, you know what? I trust. I have hope that this person to be right in the, in the latter end. Right. So that's why he telling them. He's telling them, show yourself a man because you prove it. Right. It's apparent to people. Right. You're showing it. You're signaling to people. This is how I want to be. I want to do this right. And he know that comes with mercy. Right. So he said, he said, go ahead and be strong. Show yourself a man. What else? And keep the charge of Yahuwah, your God. To walk in his ways. Walk in his ways. To keep his statutes. To keep his statutes. And his commandments. And his commandments. And his judgments. And his judgments. And his testimonies. Mm -hmm. As it is written in the law of Moses that you may prosper in all that you do. That's right. And whithersoever you turn yourself, <clears throat> that Yahuwah may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, If your children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, mm -hmm. there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. So he told him, he's like, listen, if you keep the law, I will make sure, this is what Yah is telling him, I will make sure you continuously have a descendant that's sitting on this throne. All them boys just got to keep the law. That's all they got to do. Right? So this is why he's telling his son, look, yo, make sure you have to understand why David is saying it. He said, look, show yourself a man and make sure you keep all this man's law, his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, his testimony. You keep everything. Do what the man say. Because David looking like, man, this thing going to be nice. I'm going to have a whole lineage of kings. This going to be, it's going to sit in my house forever. It's the promise that the man told me. All y'all got to do is do what y'all supposed to do. Y'all my boys. Of course you're going to do what you're supposed to do. But then he see how many of his boys didn't do what they supposed to do. So now he got to stress it to the king. He got to stress it to King Solomon. Like, look, just listen. Do what the man tell you to do. Be strong. Because we going to see this thing through. OK, so let's see. All that is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and mm -hmm. wheresoever you turn yourself, mm -hmm. that Yahuwah may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, if the children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, mm -hmm. there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. Mm -hmm. Moreover, you know also what Joab, the son of Zeruiah, did to me and what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel, unto mm -hmm. Abner, the son of Ner, 
and unto Amasa, the son of Jetha. Y'all remember what Joab did, right? Who remember what Joab did? Nobody? What'd Joab do to what do Joab do to uh, Abner? Mel. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Who he stabbed? He stabbed Abner. Who else? Then the Mesa. Remember he stabbed the Mesa too? Remember David? Remember David, you know what I'm saying? Put a Mesa in the spot that, that Joab used to be in. He put him, he made him the leader of all the army. And after that. That's right. Well, look at you. Remember, he grabbed him by the beard. His 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 sword was loose. In the fifth rib, that's right. In the fifth rib, where he put it, he did the same thing to Abner. He stabbed Abner in the fifth rib, right? So, so this is this is this is what this is what Joab did, and David didn't like this. David held on to the David old, right? Old right now. Remember, remember last last week we read that David was so old he his body heat wouldn't even stay. He had to have some some of the young women come sleep with him. To keep him warm. He wasn't even messing with the girl. He just like, man, I just need to be warm. Just, just come lay next to me. Cause I need to be, and I don't want no grown man sitting over me. You know what I'm saying? Or so like, you know, just, just have the young lady come lay next to me. You know what I'm saying? To keep me warm. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have no heaters or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like he had to do what he had. So this is how old the man is. And now he's sitting there, he holding on to this stuff. Before he died, he's looking like, look, you remember what Joab did. Right? You remember what Joab did. You make sure you take care of that. So now he's telling Solomon about that. He's making sure Solomon before. Listen, before I'm going to get up out of here. But don't you let these boys die naturally without you handling this stuff. Because remember, Joab old, too. Watch what he say about Joab. It's like, you know, he old. Moreover, you know also what Joab, the son of Zeruiah, did to me and what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel, mm -hmm. unto Abner, the son of Ner, and unto Amasa, the son of Jetha, mm -hmm. whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace, mm -hmm. but put blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins and in his shoes that were on his feet. Right. And, and Sister Sharon, she said, and on top of that, he killed, he killed, uh, he killed Absalom. Right. He killed David's son. But let me tell you why David didn't mention that one, right? Notice what David just said there. He killed two men in the way of war, when it was really although peace. it was peace. Mm -hmm. In other words, I treated you like you was an enemy, but I'm also making you believe that you're at peace with me, right? I really, there's really no legitimate war, but there's no legitimate issue with you. It's just a personal issue. That's murder, mm -hmm. right? When you at war, that's not murder. When you at war, that's just like you go, you know what I'm saying, to Afghanistan under the orders of America be, to protect the country. You didn't, you didn't, you know what I'm saying, you, whatever you did over there, that, I ain't gonna say whatever you did, but you know what I'm saying, but following those orders, that's not murder, right? You kill somebody for sure, perhaps, right? But that's not murder. What we talking about here is you had a man that's apparently on your same side. David gave you a peace treaty to uh, Abner. You approach him, right? You approach him as if you're friends. As if we are. Right. And then you stab the man in the fifth rib when he, you know what I'm saying, when he's defenseless. Right? So you treated him as if it's war, although it was peace. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Do therefore according to your wisdom, and let not his whore head, whore head go down to the grave in peace. So when they say whore head, hoary head, gray head, that's talking about gray hair. So it's letting you know he's he's old. So he's saying, don't let him die of natural causes. He has to be dealt with, right? I know he old, and this that and other. A lot of time now, you look at you look at some of these uh, some of these judges. Stand up, son. You look at some of these judges. 
And the judges, if you're dealing with a really, really old person, when they come, when it comes time for them to be convicted, they'll look at it and be like, yeah, just you know, give them time, sir. They'll take it easy on because it's like they ain't even gonna be living much longer. For example, a lot of this stuff has to do with racism too. It was a it was a, a young man named uh, Emmett Till, all right? His name was Emmett Till. You talked about Emmett Till. What you know about Emmett Till? He got beat. Yeah, he got beat. Hey! He was unrecognizable. Yeah, he got to the point where he's uh, he's unrecognizable. So Emmett Till, he had, he had an encounter with a white woman. He was a young he was a young boy, and he had an encounter with a white woman down south. And this was a time where things were extremely racist and openly racist. So it was a known thing. Don't you sit here. Don't have no conversation. Don't make a white woman uncomfortable. Don't even look at him. This, that, and the other. He's from a place where things are a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? It's still racist, but things are a little bit more loosey-goosey in a sense, right? He go down there and he got to, you know, he got to deal with, you know what I'm saying, the, the strict South when it comes to racism. And uh, he whistled, they claimed that he whistled at the young lady and she claimed that he raped her. And so the, the, the men came and they beat his butt. They kidnapped him and beat his butt, you know what I'm saying? They ended up beating him so bad that he died. And then they tried to do away with him. You know what I'm saying? They found his body. They looked at him. And his mom had to come from all the way out of town and kind of look at him and say, no, nah, that's my boy. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think they shipped him to her. But, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? That's my boy. So, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, very, it was very painful for her. Right? But the lady who lied and said that he raped her, she, she lived for a very long time. She is a very, very old lady. You know what I'm saying? I think she died like recently, like yeah. 2017 she, or something yeah, like that. Came out, she came out and said she lied about it. Yeah, she came out and she said, I lied about that. Right? Now, she could have been charged. Let me take that back. She should have been charged. Right? But one of the things, when you read online, one of the things that made people like, huh, she's old anyway. She'll be dead soon. Not me. Although that's true. I'm like, she will her, be. Throw her in there. She was dead soon. These are the types of things had had Emma Till's mom had the authority of David, she would have said, do not let her hoary head fall to the ground without judgment. And this is where the Christians get it wrong. Like they can't necessarily uphold the justice and judgment of God because they hold on to the lie that God doesn't require justice and judgment. That's right. So they think that they can do whatever they want and be forgiven and sins or whatever whatever just loosey-goosey doing whatever whatever you want to do but they don't understand that god requires judgment you know even it requires it yahushua is gonna require judgment so that. they can't necessarily demand the justice back because when something like that happens to Emmett Till, and if a christian wants to get up in arms and say no she needs to be dealt with then somebody else can retort and say but don't god forgive all sins yeah we Which don't it's true but you still have to face judgment. Like you can be forgiven, but judgment still needs to be served. Yeah, we don't we we don't have that problem because we understand the scripture. Like we understand, we just read it. I want y'all to be quiet. I um we just read, we just read with David. David committed a sin. He had a man killed because he slept with that man's wife, right? After that. The Most High God, one of the first things that the Most High God said to him after David confessed, right, was what? What was one of the first things that God said to David after David confessed to what he did? He said, I put away your sin. He said, you're pardoned. Pardon means forgiven. But. Right? But what? Eli, y'all better be quiet. Yeah, sword was going to be at his house. His son had to die. And he said, the stuff that you did quietly is going to happen openly. Right. So although he was although he was pardoned and he was forgiven right after saying you forgiven. Oh, but as a result of what you did, this is all the stuff that's going to happen to you. Justice, judgment. That was, that was a, a different situation, different but that's another example, right? No matter what happens, 
you have to deal with the consequence. And sometimes the consequence is judgment. Right. You got two things. You got judgment and you got consequence. Sometimes you can have consequences that are not judgment. Sometimes it's just, it just how it works. Right. Sometimes, sometimes if I push somebody, the consequence is they might fall over. That's what it comes down. If I play basketball, a consequence might be that somebody bumps me. Right. That I get tired. Right. That's a consequence of doing it. It's not that's not a judgment. However, a judgment might be if I commit a foul in basketball, then that person gets to take th two shots. They get an opportunity to take two shots. That's a judgment. Right. So judgments will always be consequences, but consequences are not always judgments. And you look at what you look at what what happened with David. He got pardoned. And then as a consequence, he also got judgments that, that got put onto him that lasted for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to see things the exact same way. Right. When people do stuff that they ain't got nothing to do, that don't mean that we vigilantes and we go up and we bring the judgment on. Because the most High God said judgment is his. Vengeance, Vengeance is his. Lies, I will repay. Right. That's his. But that don't mean that we're absent to where that judgment belongs. There's a couple judgments I hang on to. Now. Country got to pay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen, there's a big judgment against the country now. I want them reparations. It's only, it's only right. Only right. It's only right. <clears throat> I'm not going to forget about that because it's so old. That's what these people do. That was 250 years ago. That was this, that, and other. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and take a loan out in your house and then tell them, man, that was 30 years ago. You know what I'm saying? That was 15 years ago. You want me to pay you? You still want that money? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I still want it. And I'm still not going to let you ever take out another loan with us. Even if they remove it from your credit, guess what? You still cannot take out another loan with us. That's a consequence. That's a judgment. Everybody understand it when it comes to them personally. It's only when it gets to us. It's like, mm. conveniently, people want to see it different. Mm -hmm. Right? But that is the issue. What the brother said, that you is the that issue. issue. People, the Christians, because they don't understand this piece, and because they, 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 they've been cleverly, a lot of them are victims, right? But they've been cleverly taught to see the book in a certain light to protect their own self-righteousness. Right? They want to remain having a righteous view of themselves right and a lot of times you'll hear christian call people self-righteous but really if you look at self-righteousness it's saying that i am right and that's what christians would te technically do they say well i'm saved how you know you saved because i accepted the lord jesus christ in tomorrow therefore i'm saved okay if you're saved delivered that means you're in right standing with god okay so you're saying that by no, by no works of your own, right? This is what they no works of your own. It ain't, you know, it ain't nothing that you did. It's by God's grace completely that you're right. Okay. The what makes self righteousness wrong is when you're right by the standard that the, that the Most High God did set. So the Most High God said to be right with me, you have to turn away from all sin. But a Christian say, no, it's impossible to turn away from all sin. You don't have to do that. Actually, all you have to do is say. God, will you forgive me of my sins? And at that moment, you're 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 saved, right? That means that you're self righteous because that's not according to God's righteousness. You've established that righteousness on yourself, right? So to support that self righteous position, to support the fact that it's impossible to turn away from sin, and you're saved by God's grace alone, there's nothing that you could do to support that and idea. God no matter what. And God loves you no matter what. To support that idea. You have to do away with judgment. So now, when so it, now they look like a hypocrite. Go ahead. So now, when it's your turn to get justice, and when somebody else needs to be judged for what they did to you, they can argue back against you. And now, you, and then you got to eat that. You just got to shut up. So that's where the hypocrisy often comes with with Christians because they have things that are personal to them, right? You go to some church and it's like, no, nah, you can't have no gay person. That's a sin. You going to hell, right? Then you go to other church, per, other churches, and they got gay people sitting there on the choir. You know what I'm saying? Flagging their little butt around, running back and forth. Love your neighbor. Right? That it, but it just depends on where you at. You go to some Christian churches, you better not cuss. 
You go to other Christian churches, they all cut. Some Christian church, they smoking weed, drinking. Other Christian churches, you can't even smoke. You can't even have a cigarette. Right? Because it's all about personal. It's not based off of the rule of God. When it's the rule of God, that I should be able to find a book, a chapter, and a verse. And I should be able to show it to you, and we can all objectively look at it and say, this is why this is wrong. Y'all will never hear me say something that I can't, I ain't gonna say that. If I ever were to say something that I can't support in a book, let me be a liar and let the book be true. Right? Anybody can say whatever they want to say. And if I ever pop up one day and the most I got taken from me where I get to talking wild, then y'all there ain't no reason to keep following me. That thing don't make no sense. You follow the book. Everybody else can be a liar. Right? We have to come with book. We have to be able to show in the book. If I say it's a sin to cuss, then guess what? I need to go to, give me Ephesians chapter 5. Because I could just be running my mouth. I'd be like, man, don't be out there cussing. I can be running my mouth. But let's see, Ephesians chapter 5. Give me Ephesians chapter 5. What I want, verse 6, 7? <laughs> you said the choir director? <laughs> Uh, you know, be a, he's just the choir director. Hey, yeah, you ain't lying about that. That boy be funny, bunny. You know what I'm saying? That boy be a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? Um, be hot to dark mollies is what they be. Do three. Three? I want to, uh, this is Ephesians chapter five. Give me verse three. Watch the book say. But fornication and all unclean, uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Uh huh. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, Look. nor jesting. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, that what? Like jokes, like inappropriate jokes. Mm -hmm. Which are not convenient. Right, so when it say jesting, which are not convenient, that's saying inappropriate jokes. Right? So it get, look, filthy, it said, get your filthy darn mouth. Right? Foolish talk, I mean, you just saying stupid stuff that don't make no darn sense. And joking, that's not appropriate. It was another one that said, uh, I forget where it was at, but he said uh, filthy communication, too. Yeah, it said that, too. Yeah. Right? Now, y'all take that how you want. That's talking about cussing. That's talking about using inappropriate language. Right? Keep going. Watch what he say about it. You ain't going to never find nothing in the book to say if you smoke a cigarette, you're going to hell. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't, I don't think anybody should smoke cigarettes. But just because I personally feel that, I ain't sending somebody to hell for that because I ain't in my power. You go to hell for cigarettes, that's going to be because God sent you to hell for cigarettes. He didn't write that in his book, though. He didn't write nothing in his book to make me believe that mm, cigarettes, no, no, I ain't got that. I can't pull that out of the book. I can pull cussing out. Keep going. Watch this. But rather giving of thanks, for this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has uh -huh. any inheritance in the kingdom of the Messiah you and have, of God. You have zero inheritance in the kingdom of the Messiah and of God. Therefore, when the kingdom come, you won't make it, is what it's saying. Right? So now a Christian would have to look at that and say, nope, that's not true. Because no one can stop doing these things. So that doesn't apply to me. Wouldn't blasphemy count too? Just like yeah, blasphemy is cussing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's in Mark seven, right? Zahar, stand up. Colossians, Colossians three eight. All right, so it's important that we kind of look at this and we understand what we're dealing with, right? Judgment is necessary, so that's why David is telling them, "Listen, do not let him get by. We have to deal with this." Let's go back, right? Because David got a couple more people he got it, you know what I'm saying? David gave him a list. You know what I'm saying? He told, look, Solomon, go ahead and be strong. Show yourself a man. But yo, 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 hold on. Let me talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you deal with a few folks for me. So a couple of these people, man, woo, let me tell you what they did to your dad. I need you to handle this for me. Let's see. Uh, verse, verse 6. 
Do therefore according to thy wisdom and let not his poor head go down to the grave in peace. Mm -hmm. That's a great head. <clears throat> but show kindness unto the sons of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at your table. Right? So Barzillai, the Gileadite. Ah, Y'all remember him? Yeah, wasn't he the one that was looking out for him when Absalom started cooking? When Absalom started going crazy, you know what I'm saying? That's that's one of the people that came. I remember it was a group. Grab uh, 2 Samuel 17. We'll read it real quick. Hmm? Okay. Zahar. Uh, tell Eli something. It's 2 Samuel chapter 17. Give me verse 27. Second Samuel 17. Yeah, 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 27. And it came to pass when David was come to Mahanaim that Shobi, the son of Nahash of Reba, of the children of Ammon, and Maker, the son of Amiel of Lodibar, and Barzillai, the Gileadite of Rogilium. Eat your steak and rice, don't eat the spaghetti. Brought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour and pitch corn and beans and lentils and parched posts. So look what he brought him. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He brought him. He brought him all this food. So David out. He on the run at this point. He brought him all this food. All right. Keep going. And honey, and butter, and sheep, and cheese of kind for David, and for the people that were with him to eat. For they said the people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. Mm hmm. Okay, keep going. Uh, that was the end of the chapter. Go to uh, go to second. Second Samuel 19. So that's that's when he brought it to him. And now things are a little better in Second Samuel 19. So now David want to kind of show his gratitude, right? This second Samuel, uh this second Samuel 19, give me verse 31. The tribe took him and when he was being hunted. That's right. And Barzillai the Gileadite came down from Rogelium. And went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Mm -hmm. Now, Barzillai was a very aged man. So now this is Barzillai. And he was a very aged man. In other words, this boy old, right? He's an old man. Even 80 years old. Mm -hmm. And he provided the king wait, wait. of sustenance while he lay in Mahanaim. Mm -hmm. But he was a very great man. Mm -hmm. And the king said unto Barzillai, come over with me and I will feed you with, with me in Jerusalem. Right? So now David is like, man, come back to me in Jerusalem and you can eat at my table. He's showing gratitude. He's like, man, you looked out for me. I'm the king. I'm back. I'm going back home. You come with me now. You know what I'm saying? We'll be all right. Well, watch what Barzillai said. Barzillai said unto the king, how long have I to live that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? He said, I'm an old man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to go back up to you. Watch what he say. I am this day 80 years old. He said, I'm 80 years old. Watch this. And can I discern between good and evil? Can mm -hmm. your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Right? He was like, listen. If I put something in my mouth, can I even taste it? You invite me to go eat. Can I even enjoy the enjoy the food? And then when he say, can I discern good and evil? He's like, can I even make it? Can I tell you if the food was good or bad? Right? Right. He said, he said, look, when I taste it, can can your servant, he's talking about himself, can I even understand what it tastes like? I'm so old, my taste buds don't work. Watch this. Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? At your kingdom, I know it be popping. Y'all always got the songs going and everything. I know it's good. Can I even enjoy that? He said, I can't even hear these boys like that. So Barzilla is letting them know, it don't make no sense for me to come back. With you, I'm old. I'm about to die. He about to tell him, watch this. Why then should your servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? Mm -hmm. Your servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king. Mm -hmm. And why should the king recompense it me with such a reward? Mm -hmm. Let your servant, I pray thee, turn back again that I may die in my own city and be buried by the grave of my father and my mother. Mm -hmm. But behold, your servant, Kimham, let him go over with my lord the king and do to him what seems good unto you. And the king answered, Kimham shall go over with me, and I will do unto him that which shall seem good unto you. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever you shall require of me, that will I do for you. Mm -hmm. And all the people went over Jordan, and when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his own place. All right. 
So that was the end of that. Barzilla was like, man, I'm old. I'm going my own way. Why don't you take the young boy instead? They was like, yeah, okay. And I'll do whatever you say is right to the young boy, right? And that's where he left it. So now when he's talking to his son, Solomon, he's explaining to Solomon, yo, make sure you kill Joab. Deal with him, right? And then Barzillo, Bar Barzillai, the sons of Barzillai, I think that's what he said, right? The sons. Because Barzillai should be dead by now. Did it say the sons? Oh, my bad. I'm wrong. Or it might say the house of Bar Barzillai. Essentially, it's going to be his family, though. Whatever it says, it's going to be, he's talking about his family, right? The family of Barzillai, he's like, look out for them. Show kindness unto the sons of Barzillai. The sons, right? So now he's saying, okay, Barzillai's children, his sons, you show kindness to them. Tell them what it watch. Watch what he tell them to do. Remember what he wanted Barzilla to do. What did he just want Barzilla to do? Come stay with me. Come stay with me. Why don't you come stay with me? I'll look out for you. You can eat at my table. Watch what he told him to do to his sons. Show kindness unto the sons of Barzilla, the Gileadite, and let him be of those that eat at your table. Mm -hmm. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom, my your brother. Mm -hmm. And behold, you have with you Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjaminite, a Benjamite of Bahirim. So y'all remember Shimei? Don't nobody remember Shimei? Okay. What we got, shit? Listen, son, you've been on today. If you give me Shimei, oh, you all right. You know what I'm saying? You lost in the playoff. But GLJ, you might have redeemed yourself if you give me Shimei. Yeah, I nah, you taking too long. Shimei, give me. Why are you thinking? 2 Samuel chapter 16. What shimmy I do to uh, King David? Let me see if Sharon got us. Uh, Sharon ain't got us either. Come on, Sharon. What we got? Sister Pamela, what we got? We got a couple other people in the chat. Who else in the chat? Shaul, you in here still? Shaul. And when King David came to Bahirim, behold, there came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son mm -hmm. of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. Mm -hmm. And he cast stones at David and all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on the right hand and on his left. So and what that, did he do to David? He threw right, cast stones. He threw rocks at him. And he cursed him. Watch this. Keep going. And thus said Shimei, Watch him say it. He's about to curse. Shimei cursed. Come out, come out, you bloody man, and you men of Belial. Yahuwah has returned upon you the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead you have reigned. Watch it. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, your son. And behold, you are taken to your mischief because you are a bloody man. All right? So this is all the stuff he's saying to the king. You know what I'm saying? This is the king of all of Israel. He talking big trash to him and throwing rocks at him. Watch this. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruiah. So Abishai, remember, this is this is Joab, brother. Abishai looking at the boy like, watch what he say. Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Why should this dead dog curse my... Watch what he said. Watch it. Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. I'll take off his head right now. Right? Abishai looking like, oh, we can deal with this right now. Watch what David said. And the king said, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because Yahuwah have said unto him, curse David. Who shall then say, why have you done so? And right. David said to Abishai and to all the servants, behold, my son, which came forth out of my bow, seek my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse. For Yahuwah has bidden. He said, I'm not going to deal with this right now. But he never forgot about it. <laughs> he never forgot about it. So now, while he's before he dies, he's telling his son, Solomon, you remember Shimei, right? Let's go back. You remember Shimei, right? Deal with him. That's what he's about to tell. He's about to say, deal with Shimei. Right? Let's jump back on back. Oh, where were we up? First Kings 2, verse 11. It's first Kings chapter 2. And behold, you have with you Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite of Bahiram, which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Mahanaim. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, hold him not guiltless, for you are a wise man, and know what you ought to do unto him. But his whore head bring you down to the grave with blood. Mm -hmm. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. Mm -hmm. In the days of David, 
in the days that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. Mm -hmm. Seven years he reigned in Hebron, and 30 and three years he reigned in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. Mm -hmm. And Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Beth Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, and she said, So you remember, this is Adonijah. Y'all remember Adonijah, right? We, we read about Adonijah two weeks ago, right? So Adonijah was the one that tried to take the kingdom. He tried to take the kingdom from uh, uh, after David. That's uh, David's other son. That's Absalom's younger brother. Right. So he tried to take the kingdom. And then after that, David sent out, you know, they sent out the message like, no, nah, the kingdom going to Solomon. So after that, everybody got scared. It was like, no, 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 we good. They came over to Solomon. It's like, no, nah, no problems. We don't want no beef. So I was like, all right, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Everything was good. So now Adonijah is approaching Solomon's mom, Bathsheba. What's up? Yeah, so now she's a, he's approaching Solomon's mom, Bathsheba. And he's about to make a request. Watch this. And she said, do you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably. And he said, moreover, I have somewhat to say unto you. Mm -hmm. And she said, say on. And he said, you know that the kingdom was mine and that all Israel set their faces on me that I should reign. Howbeit, the kingdom is turned about and has become my brother's. For it was his from Yahuwah. And now I ask one petition of you, deny me not. And she said unto him, say on. And he said, speak, I pray thee unto Solomon the king, for he will not say no to you, that he give me Abishag the Shunammite to wife. And Bathsheba said, well, I will speak for you unto the king. Bathsheba therefore went unto King Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed himself unto her and sat down on his throne. And caused the seat to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on his right hand. Mm -hmm. And she said, I desire one small petition of thee. I right. Thee. So now she's talking to her son. Her son happens to be the king. She's like, listen, I want to ask you for one thing. Right. Don't say no to me. Watch this. Say me not nay. And the king said unto her. Ask on my mother, for I will not say tell you no. Mm -hmm. And she said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah, your brother, the wife. And King Solomon answered and said unto his mother, And why do you ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also. Right. For so he is my elder brother, even for him, and for Abiathar the priest, and for Joab the son of Zeruiah. Right. So now Solomon understands. Solomon is wise. Right. He's very sharp. So he understood the play immediately. Matter of fact, I didn't even get this thing right before until just now. You know what I'm saying? Because I always used to wonder, like, bro, he just wanted the young thing. <laughs> he just wanted a young thing. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted a young thing. I remember this thing a million times. I'm just now like, okay. I get it. Yeah, so you got you to gotta remember. You got to take it back to Absalom. So if you remember, Absalom was trying to take the kingdom. When Absalom was trying to take the kingdom, one of the first things he was given advice to do is to go sleep with his dad's wives, his concubines. So he went in, and in front of everybody, he slept with his dad's concubines. And that's when the revolt started to say, Absalom is going to be the king. That's when the struggle began, right? So now, Adonijah, trying to be slick, he like, mm, I got it. Give me, what's her name? Abishag. Give me Abishag. But let's jump back to 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 1, uh, verse 1. This is 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 1. This is 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 1. From now on, when we're talking, it's going to be a whole lot of flipping back referring back to what we went over because it's important for the story. It's important for us to understand this history. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Now King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Mm -hmm. Wherefore a servant said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king, a young virgin, and mm -hmm. let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in your bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. Mm -hmm. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel. And who they find? And they found Abishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. So now the king was laying with this woman, right? No funny business was going on. 
But in the sight of all the people, this is one of the king's concubines. This is one of his women. Right? So now Abishag putting that, I mean, yeah, uh, 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 Adonijah putting that together, he, he, this is what Solomon is thinking. Solomon looking at it like, I know you're trying to be king, right? You tried to be king before, and now you come and you talk to my mama. You didn't come to me, you come, you come and talk to my mama. You asked for this woman to wife. It happens to be the same woman that was paired with my dad to keep him warm. As far as the people see that, that's his woman. Your older brother tried to take the kingdom. From my dad by sleeping with his women. So he said to his mama, oh, you want to give him that to wife? Oh, you want to give him the kingdom also? And Abiathar. You know what I'm saying? Who's the priest? And remember, when it all split, who was standing on Adonijah's side? Abiathar was standing on his side. That was, that was one of David's priests. But when it split, Joab and Abiathar, Joab being the, the, uh, the previous leader of all the army, and Abiathar being the high, or I guess you can consider him one of the high priests or a priest. With the king, you're going to have the army, the, the captain of the army, the priest, and the prophet. Yeah. That's going to be some of the most important positions. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or the offices of, you know what I'm saying, of the well, king. that's not supposed to go. Not all our kings, is, you know. Yeah, they they weren't built like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's not supposed to go. So you look at it, Solomon saw the play immediately. And let's read it again. And he asked the question, like, oh, you going to give him the kingdom also? And King Solomon answered and said unto his mother, and why do you ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Mm -hmm. Ask for him the kingdom also, mm -hmm. for he is my elder brother, even for him, and for Abiathar the priest, and for Joab the son of Zeruiah. The King Solomon swore by Yahuwah, saying, God do so to me and more also, if Adonijah have not spoken this word against his own life. Mm -hmm. So he said, he said, Adonijah said that, and he, he bringing his own death about. All right, watch this. Now therefore, as Yahuwah lives, which has established me and set me on the throne of David my father, mm -hmm. and who has made me a house, as mm -hmm. he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death this day. Mm -hmm. And King Solomon sent by the hand of Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and he fell upon him, and that he died. And unto Abiathar the priest. Yeah, I remember Ben Ai, right? He was, that, he was that man. Him and him, him, he was among the mighty men of David. He was among the mighty men. But wow. you remember we talked about the army that he ran. Yeah, he was like top, he was like top ten, I think, top seven. Y'all remember, y'all remember specifically, he ran the um uh, the black ops squad. The black ops, right? He ran the uh the Navy SEALs, right? Ah, what is their name? Karathites. Karathites, you good, boy. That's a good he's good. The Kirathites, right? They name mean destroyer or executioner is what the what it means in Hebrew, right? So it's like these boys is them boys, right? He he ran that special operations team. Like, oh, somebody about to die. Man. Yeah, yeah. Them boys come out, you know, them boys slick. They got it, they're gonna take care of business, they're gonna be out of there. Ain't nobody even gonna know that what happened. Right? So Joab ran the whole thing at times, right? But Benny Aya, he he ran this special group of like trained killers. You know what I'm saying? Like just just a, a excellent squad of killers. He ends up taking over the. We gonna see that he ends up taking over the whole shebang for Solomon. So he run the whole group for Solomon, right? So Benny Aya, he he's the one that fell on um, Adonijah and killed him. That's that's Solomon's brother. So he had to kill his brother because his brother, you know what I'm saying, kept being suspicious. About taking the kingdom. He already let him go once. He's like, all right, now you're playing too much. Right? Maddox, tell him to turn that down. Tell him to turn that down. <clears throat> and also with Abiathar, that's, that, that happens here. You know what I'm saying? What God told, told Eli. So, same, what was that? Judges. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of. But yes, the he get, well, let's, well, let's read it. And King Solomon sent by the hand of Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and he fell upon him that he died. And unto Abiathar the priest said the king, Get thee to Anathoth unto thine own fields, for mm -hmm. you are worthy of death. But I will not at this time put thee to death, because you bear the ark of Yahuwah God before David my father. Right? And because so said, you have been afflicted in all wherein my father was afflicted. 
right? So he's looking at it. You have to understand how wise and how 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 fair, you know what I'm saying, Solomon is. He's looking at it. He's looking at it, you are deserving of death. And he told him that. You deserve to, you stood with this dude. So you deserve to die for what, what's going on. However, two things are saving you. And you have to understand where he might be pulling this from. Two things are saving you. One, you bear the ark. That's saving you right now. Two, you was in the trenches with my dad. You know what I'm saying? I can't take that away from you. You know what I'm saying? I can't take, you was in there with my dad. You know what I'm saying? Y'all been through some stuff. I heard all about it. Those two things are saving you. Where might he be pulling that from to spare the priest? It was at that time when, uh, when Saul wanted to kill the priest and they was like, you know what I'm saying? We not, we not going to lift our hand up against it. That would be once. Why? Where would they pull it from? Why would they say, mm, I ain't you know, touching the you priest? Can't, you, can't, you can't revive the ruler of your people. Like That's law. law. What else? What about Aaron, our very first high priest? Moses came down. He saw Aaron made two idols, mm -hmm. right? What happened to Aaron as a result of that by Moses? He's pardoned. That boy left alone. Right? God was gonna kill him though. Moses had to break him. Aaron and uh Aaron and uh Miriam reviled against Moses. What happened to Miriam? She got leprosy for what was it, seven days? What happened to Aaron? Days, like Aaron was pardoned, but he died later. So you see. Anybody, somebody as wise as Solomon would be looking at the law and look at it like, oh, God ain't touching these people. Like, God ain't touch. God saw fault with these people and he ain't touching. He like, you know what I'm saying? You did not, listen, let me be clear. You deserve to die. Man. You deserve to die. But I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Not right now. Ain't Jeremiah from Anathoth? Huh? Ain't that what Jeremiah from? The prophet? I don't remember. I think so. Anathoth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't recall. Um, but keep going. Watch this. So he he said, I'm not going to kill him right now, but he's going to tell him what he needs to do. He said, get thee up to Anathoth unto your own fields, mm -hmm. for you are worthy of death. But I will not at this time put you to death because you bear the ark of the Lord God before David, my father, and because you have been afflicted in all where my father was afflicted. Mm -hmm. So Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being priest unto Yahuwah. That he might fulfill the word of Yahuwah, which he spake concerning the house of Eli and Shiloh. So now he can't run the priest. Technically, he's still a son of Aaron, right? But he can't fulfill the priest's priest off, uh, office, mm -hmm. right? So he told him, go on, you can't serve with me no more. Right? So remember, there's two. There was um, Zadok. Yeah, Zadok and Abiathar. That's who ran with David, right? So now you only have Zadok left. Keep going. Watch this. Then tidings came to Joab, for Joab had turned after Adonijah, though he turned not after Absalom. And Joab fled to the tabernacle of the Lord and caught hold of the horns of the altar. And it was told King Solomon that Joab was fled into the tabernacle of the Lord. And behold, he is by the altar. Then Solomon sent Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go fall upon him. Mm -hmm. And Benaiah came unto the tabernacle of Yahuwah and said unto him, Thus says the king, Come forth. And he said, no, but I will die here. All right. So Joab got word. All right. They got word like, hey, man, I think I think somebody probably came to him. Like, man, Solomon, I'll get everybody, bro. <laughs> everybody that wronged David. It looked like Solomon going after them boys, man. For real? What you, why, why, you, why, you, why you think that? Man, I'm trying to tell you, look, Adonijah just went up. I just know he went in there to Bathsheba. Next thing I know, that boy dead. That boy Solomon comes storming out, and Benaiah killed that boy in front of everybody. You know what I'm talking about? He killed Benaiah. I mean, Benaiah killed him. Yeah. Then what else happened? Then the man Solomon went walk right up to Abathar, uh, and he looked at him and like, "Yo, you get your butt out of here. You deserve to die. I ain't gonna do it to you right now. Get your butt up out of here." I'm telling you, bro, you might want to skip town, <laughs> right? So then Joab looking like, I'm going wherever Avatar go. 
Are you looking? Like, mm, no. I'm going to run over there because I know he ain't going to spare me. All right? Joab not dumb. And he know he ain't messing with uh, uh, Ben Ai. So he looking like, no, nah, I'm going to go to the altar. His thought being, if I'm at the altar, ain't nobody going to kill me while I'm at the altar of the Most High God. Right? This is a very sacred thing. You not about to spill a man's blood on the altar. Like, that's not going to happen. So let's see what happens. And Benaiah came to the tabernacle of Yahuwah and said unto him, Thus said the king, Come forth. And he said, No, but I will die here. And Benaiah brought the king word again, saying, Thus said Joab. And thus he answered me. Mm -hmm. And the king said unto him, Do as he has said, and fall upon him, and bury him, that you may take away the innocent blood which he shed, which Joab shed from me, and from the house of my father. And the Lord shall return his blood upon his own head, who fell upon two men more righteous and better than him. And slew them with the sword, my father David, with the sword, my father David, not knowing thereof, to wit, Abner, the son of Ner, captain of the host of Israel, and Amasa, the son of Jether, captain of the host of Judah. Their blood shall therefore return upon the head of Joab and upon the head of his seed forever. Mm -hmm. But upon David and upon his seed and upon his house and upon his throne shall there be peace forever from Yahuwah. So Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, went up and fell upon him and slew him. And he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. All right. Kill that boy right there. All right. So now hold on to this in memory because now this becomes a saying later. All right. It didn't stop him from dying. But you're going to see that this is referenced as a saying later on in the book. Fall upon him. Yep. Even if they at the altar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. I always thought that was tight. Go fall upon that boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Even if they at the altar. Bro. Yeah, so Abiathar was taken from his priesthood, just like God prophesied in Samuel, if y'all remember, uh, to Eli. The but we're not done yet, right? So watch this, because it, it, you know what I'm saying? Go mention it. And the king put Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, in his room over the host. And Zadok, the priest, did the king put in the room of Abiathar. Mm -hmm. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Build you a house in Jerusalem and dwell there, and do not go forth from there anywhere. Or did we already pass it? It didn't mention the Eli piece already? Yeah, it did. Oh, we already passed that? Yeah, on verse 27. Oh, okay. So let's go back. Let's go back to, to Eli. Let's go to uh 1 Samuel chapter 2. I just want y'all to I want y'all to hear it. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff. It's just it's you have to understand how much time has passed. Right. It was Samuel. Samuel, Samuel would have been about like 15, 16, maybe. No, nah, that's more than Samuel that. Samuel was old. Samuel, no, nah, Samuel was a baby when that happened. He was a little kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talk about Eli. Yeah, I'm thinking about like Samuel to David. Oh, yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. If you look at if you look at when that happened, Samuel would have been just a kid. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? So he he just started getting the prophecy. About like 12, 13 or something. Yeah, like that. somewhere probably a preteen or teenager. You know what I'm saying? So you look at that, you fast forward, you have all the years of Samuel, probably like, what is he, 90 or something he was, like that? He was about, about all, like 100 when he died, maybe. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? So you got, you probably got, you probably got 90, 80 years right there from Samuel. Then, then from know, there, you get David. Which was 47, not including when he was on the run from Saul for like, what, three years maybe? So that's probably, you know what I'm saying, it probably wasn't his full life. Let's say he met him, you know what I'm saying, around 18 or something like that. Then you probably got like another, another... But another 70, 60 years on top of that. So you got over 100 years, almost 200 years, going towards 200 years that have passed. And the Most High God haven't forgot a thing. 200 years, none of us will live long enough to see that. Right? Nevertheless, the Most High God never forgot a thing. The, what we have to take from that is nobody gets by. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody gets by. Like, this thing will touch our kids if for something that we did. You understand? Like, something that we did, it's going to make our kids' life tough or short. Right? That's why it's important. Just do the right thing. I know it. I know it's a lot of stuff out there to make us want to live a certain way and go after all these people. Don't do it. Just do the right thing. It's going to work out for you in the end. You know what I'm saying? This stuff going to mess you up trying to be like these other people, right? Not keeping yourself disciplined, not doing what you're supposed to do. It just trap you in the end. You know what I'm saying? It's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling. 
Keep going. Mm-hmm. All right, this is, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. This is 1 Samuel chapter 2. Give me verse, what verse I want? 1 Samuel chapter 2. Give me verse 30. It's 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me will be lightly esteemed. All right. This is being said to Eli. Eli was the priest. He was the one who put Samuel on. Samuel was the prophet. Remember, Samuel was the prophet that picked our first king, whose, whose name is Saul. And then when Saul messed up, Samuel went to go pick up David. So now Eli came before all of that. Eli was the priest that put Samuel on. Eli, as the priest, had two sons. His sons were crooked. They used to steal from the people and sleep with the women as the people were trying to bring offerings. Eli never dealt with it. So the most I said, God said, I'm going to deal with you. You and your house can't serve in front of me no more. That's the curse that he's putting on them right now. Watch mm-hmm. this. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me will be lightly esteemed. They that despise me will be lightly esteemed. Watch this. Behold, the days come that I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house, that there shall not be an old man in your house. Right? He's saying, listen, the days come where I'm going to get rid of all y'all. Right? But listen, you might look at that and be like, man, he didn't have all these kids. Some of them even became priests and continue to be priests. That ain't gonna happen. Right? You can you can look at it and you can take that perspective. But guess what? Keep going, watch this. And you shall see an enemy in my habitation, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in your house forever. Mm-hmm. And the man of your and the man of yours whom I shall not cut off from my altar shall be to consume thy eyes and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. Mm-hmm. And this shall be a sign unto you that shall come up unto your sons on Hophni and Phinehas. And one day they shall die, both of them. All right, and I so will raise up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. So now he said, he's telling, he said, listen, he said, first of all, if you see one of your priests, if you see somebody that come from your household that continue to be priests, the only reason for that. The only purpose for that happening is to show y'all that y'all deficient. Right? He said that's just a sign. It's just to show you. And that's exactly what happened with some of the priests that we saw that came from his house. Right? You had one. Saul killed, it. Saul killed the man. Got set up. And it, got, it killed the man. Killed a bunch of them. And then you have two. Uh, uh, Abiathar. Who gets to serve alongside another priest? He ain't even got the the whole office to himself, and then now he's shown to be deficient. He gets humili- uh, humiliated. He's like, no, nah, in front of everybody, get your butt. You know what I'm saying? Go get your butt. You can't. You know what I'm saying? You can't even serve as priest. You can't be priest yet no more. You good, boy? All right, go get you something to drink. We got a Lakers game to go to. You gotta get better, boy. He might be riding in the car with me like that. Go on, get downstairs and get you something to drink. Don't trip, nephew. I'll take your seat. Keep going. Watch this. <laughs> and I will raise up me a faithful priest that shall do according to which is in my heart and in my mind, and I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before my anointed forever. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go back. This is uh, this is uh, where are we at? Uh, First Kings chapter two, verse thirty-two. We still in chapter two. Goodness gracious! Well, it's a lot that you so lot that you got to call back. It's First Kings chapter two, verse what? Thirty-six. First Kings chapter two, verse thirty-six. What does the book say? I was trying to get all the way to chapter five. Goodness gracious! Now, Solomon is dealing with a lot of stuff that happened in the past that we got to make sure you understand why. Got to make sure you get it. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Build you a house in Jerusalem and dwell there, and go not forth from there anywhere. Mm-hmm. For it shall be that on the day that you go out and pass over the brook Kidron, you shall know for certain that you shall surely die. Your blood shall be upon your own head. Right? So pretty much he, he put him, he put him, not in jail. I wouldn't call it jail. 
he put him, and it's not even necessarily house arrest because he, he didn't tell it until you. He told him oh, if you leave, kid. yeah, you gotta leave the city. Is basically what he's saying, right? So it's like build your house, stay in your house. You can travel around town, and the town ain't a black town. You in Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where the king is. So it's like, this is pretty much the capital at this point, because the king is there. So everybody, is the, this is the place to be. You know what I'm saying? And he just told him, look, stay, stay in town. If you cross the borders of this town, your blood, did he say that yet? Yeah, he said, you shall know for certain that you shall surely die. Your blood shall be upon your own head. Mm -hmm. So he said, it's your fault. If you cross the borders of this town, it's your fault. Let's see what happens. And Shimei said unto the king, the saying is good. <laughs> Shimei was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We good with that. Because Shimei, I know, you remember after David, David's army defeated Absalom, Shimei ran to David like, yo, 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 I'm sorry about all that. I ain't mean what I was saying. Yeah, you know I'm saying? I was, I was tripping when I was listening. <laughs> My bad. Don't take it to heart. And David told him, don't worry, I ain't going to kill you. Right? I ain't going to kill you. But he said, Solomon is like, make sure you deal with that boy. You know what I'm saying? You make sure. I told him I wasn't going to kill him. You make sure you deal with that boy. So now Solomon, being fair, he said, okay, you stay here. Just follow these simple directions. You'll be all right. Solomon, no, he ain't. Right? But as soon as you cross over, I'm killing your butt. Because you know his hometown is right up the street. Benjamin right there. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, as soon as you cross through, he knew he had going on. As soon as you cross the Brook Kidrick, you know what I'm saying? Boy, I'm, a, I'm on your butt. <laughs> Watch this. And Shimei said unto the king, the saying is good, as my lord the king has said, so will your servant do. And Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem many days. And it came to pass at the end of three years that two of the servants of Shimei ran away to Achish, son of Me Meeka, king of Gath. And they told Shimei, saying, behold, your servants be in Gath. And Shimei arose and saddled his donkey and went to Gath to Achish to seek his servants. Mm -hmm. And Shimei went and brought his servants from Gath. And it was told Solomon that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and was come again. Mm -hmm. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Did I not make you swear by Yahuwah? And, pro and protested unto you, saying, No, for certain on the day that you go out and walk abroad anywhere that you shall surely die. And you said unto me, The word that I have heard is good. Why then Solomon came he back to him like, I told you don't leave, didn't I? And when you agreed to that, you came back to me and you said, I agree, that's good. He said, why then what? Why then have you not kept the oath of Yahuwah in the commandment that I have charged you with? Mm -hmm. The king said moreover to Shimei, you know all the wickedness that which your heart is privy to that you did to David my father. Therefore, the Lord shall return your wickedness upon your own head. Mm -hmm. And King Solomon shall be blessed and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. So the king commanded Benaiah, the son of Jehoiah, which went out and fell upon him, that he died. And the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Right. So that's how Solomon began his kingdom. First order of business. By cleaning up everything that was left open, that his dad intentionally left open. Because remember, his dad is dealing, David was dealing with, David was dealing with a lot of this stuff being a result of his sin. So it's a lot of these people David didn't want to touch. Because he just looking like, man, technically, you only did that because I did what I did. And, this, that, and he just felt guilty about touching people. So a lot of this stuff David didn't want to touch. But he knew it was wrong. He just didn't want to be the one to say it. He didn't want to be the one to do it right. Right? So he said, okay, you're an impartial judge in this matter. You take care of this stuff. And Solomon did that. Right? He cleaned up everything. Right? It's really only one loose end left, you know what I'm saying? But it's going to deal with itself later on anyway. Right. So uh, you will see that after Solomon becomes king, remember, his name is the king of peace. Right. After Solomon becomes king, judgment comes. And that's the same thing that we're going to see with our Messiah. Right. After the Messiah come back here and takes the throne. Judgment immediately. All the loose ends are going to be dealt with. All these people that we think haven't got judgment are going to get it. Nobody gets by. It's important that we understand that. Like, nobody gets by. That's why we don't have to itch and scratch for us to bring people judgment about. Somebody do something to us, you don't have to itch and scratch and be like, oh, I can't believe he said that to me and she said, let that stuff ride, man. I'm telling you. These people can't get by. When you serve God, these people don't get by. 
They whole stuff going to crumble before they get by. You know what I'm saying? You just can't let yourself get caught up in you feeling like you got to bring the justice because it's not happening fast enough. Just sit back and relax. Sit back and relax. Justice is coming one way or another. And that's how the Messiah is going to come back. He's going to be coming back with vengeance. All right. Just like just like Solomon came back with vengeance. All right. Any questions? All right. Well, let's pray out.